Hello and welcome to the Battle Birdie Creative Media course. I'm your host and your instructor, Elliot, and today we're going to be explaining a little bit about what you will be doing on this fantastic course. Now I know what you're thinking here, looking around this table, you're seeing a lot of really weird and interesting stuff like shoulder rigs, clapperboards and cameras, but don't worry, you don't need any of that to make a film. All you need is your imagination, a little bit of paper, a phone that can film and take pictures, and that's it. That's all you need. That's all you need to do all of this. Now we're going to walk you through the process. We're going to start with pre-production, which is sort of coming up with your idea, which is what we're going to discuss today. Production, which is you getting out and filming your project. And then we're going to go through post-production, which is your editing. So adding in all the special little effects and uh, rearranging the shots in a particular order to make your film the best it can be. Okay, so like I said, this class, we're going to start with your pre-production, okay? So bear with me on this, we're going to do a little bit of theory work, a teeny wee bit of theory work, but don't worry, I'm going to try and make it as fun as possible, okay? So, if our editor is ready, we're going to do some fancy techniques, we're going to take you back to a time past. The year was about 1920, and one day, a youngish Mr. Vladimir Prop sat down and read a hundred fairy tales. And he thought to himself, Hey there, it appears to be some similarities here. I could write a character manual and sell it and make lots of money. And so, Mr. Prop started to write out a list of these same character types that appear in all of these 100 stories. And this manual is still used to this day by filmmakers and writers and all kinds of storytellers. So, here we have is our villain. In our case, it is Lord Farquaad from Shrek. Now this character, main job, is to try and stop the hero. In our case, Lord Farquaad is trying to stop Shrek from getting to Fiona who is the princess. Well, now in some stories you can have a prince or a princess, but in our case with Shrek it is a princess. They are the prize for the hero or the romantic love interest, all gooey and all that, yuck. So after that we have the dispatcher. Now this character's job is to send the hero on their journey or their quest, okay? It's a bit of a weird one now because guess who the dispatcher is in Shrek? Did you guess right? Yeah, it is Lord Farquaad, who is also the villain. Interesting twist. I didn't see it coming, I bet you didn't. So after that we have the donor. This is a character that helps the hero on their journey. We have an odd one, but in our case, again, it is the dragon in Shrek. Which is normally quite bizarre, because normally the dragon in most stories is the villain. After that we have the helper. Now the helper is actually just someone who helps the hero. In our case, it is Shrek's best friend, Donkey. And the last one we have is the false hero. This is a bit of a weird one. The false hero tends to be someone who pretends to be a hero, but is the complete opposite, which in our case is Prince Charming. Now I know he's not in Shrek 1, he's in Shrek 2, but he isn't really a false hero in Shrek 1, so we'll just use Prince Charming from Shrek 2. Okay. Now you've got your characters written down, you've got your little, your little types of characters ready, you need to think about what is my story, okay? So, we're going to go on another little journey, bear with me here, and our editor's going to do some amazing effects. We're going to travel back to a time, to a man called Aristotle. Are we ready? Now one day, Mr Aristotle was on his way back from a day at the theatre, and he thought to himself, how can we make storytelling even easier. So while he was walking, he was pondering to himself and he figured out that every story is divided up into two acts, a before and an after. So if you think, if you put this into Shrek, you've got the beginning of Shrek where he lives in a swamp by himself and everyone's scared of him, and the after, which is where he's married to Fiona and everyone loves him. So Mr. Aristotle thought he was quite smart, but do you know what? I think we can do better. So let's see what Elliot's got to say back in the studio. Now, if we jump forward to a year, maybe uh, 1979, to a man called Sid Field, okay? Now, Mr. Field, learning what Aristotle had talked about the two-act structure, thought, do you know what? That's kind of cool, but that's a bit short. Why don't I make a three-act structure, let's say, with a beginning, a middle, and an end? 
And this theory from Mr. Phil is the one we still use today for telling any stories. You always have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay, so just to go over everything we've covered today, you have learnt about the types of characters that you will find in film and how and the three story act structure, how to lay out your story. So this is where I need you guys to do some stuff at home, okay? So what we need to do is, is using your pen and paper, is to start to work out what characters are you going to use and what your story is going to be, okay, based on everything we've done today. And then, and this is the fun part, you guys get to start filming. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. I have no idea how to do that. I don't know anything about what shots to do. I don't know anything about how to film. Don't you worry, okay? Because what we've put together here at Bowerbirdie Academy is a little pack down below here in the comments, okay? There are a few little tutorials and cheat sheets on how to lay out your shots for a film, okay? I might also throw in some of the stuff we've done today as well in case any of you forget, okay? So what are you waiting for? Go out there and get filming and stay tuned for our next class where we're gonna show you how to edit your fantastic footage. Bye!